Let's go. Let's go. We're going to go now. We're going. Desperate and chaotic moments in Colorado as a fast-moving wildfire ripped through a field towards a TV news crew. Tens of thousands of people have now fled to safety as the wind-driven flames engulf hundreds of homes. CBC's Katie Nicholson is tracking developments for us. Joining us from Washington, Katie, some terrifying scenes. Walk us through what you're hearing right now. Yeah, Jennifer, this was very sudden. There was a wind advisory from the National Weather Service in Boulder County yesterday before this started. Winds, according to officials, gusting up to 177 kilometers an hour. So with that kind of wind power, fire could travel a football field in seconds, and that's exactly what happened with these wildfires. So around noon, there were reports of smoke, and it just kind of went up from there. And these are densely suburban neighborhoods we're talking about in Louisville and Superior. Tens of thousands of people ordered to evacuate the area. Now, just take a look here. This is a video. This is a group of families trying to push the doors of a restaurant open to escape. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Here we go. It's okay. It's okay. okay. Here we go. I think it's the wind pushing against the door. Is possibly. it? Yeah. Now that video and others like it show people trying to escape the smoke and the flames of what looks like some kind of a hellscape with charred and burning debris flying all around them. And it really speaks again to how suddenly this happened and how dangerous it was. We know roughly now 500 structures, including an entire neighborhood subdivision, destroyed by just one of these fires, the biggest one, the Marshall Fire. Of course, it didn't take long for Colorado Governor Jared Polis to declare a state of emergency yesterday. This fire is frankly a force of nature. Uh, we hope uh, that the winds die down, that the weather changes. Um, but for those who are directly affected, know that you don't stand alone. The people of Colorado stand with you. Uh, for those who don't know if they have a home to return to, our prayers are with you for a safe return. Now, no reports yet of deaths, but the county sheriff acknowledged given how quick and devastating this fire was, he would not be surprised if there were fatalities. And he says he suspects that the cause is power lines, uh, which blew over in all of that wind. And it's crazy to see this kind of terrifying scene, which we'd normally expect in summer. But for this time of year, why else do officials think the emergency is happening right now? Well, yeah, so this is December. This area was actually expecting snow this week. In fact, today it is under a winter storm warning, which is expected to bring heavy snow to the area. But they have been in an extreme drought situation. I looked it up. They only had 36 millimeters of rain between August and November and very warm, dry weather this month. Here's meteorologist Tony Laubach. Well, I'll tell you, this has been very uncharacteristic for December. We've been talking about, I mean, everybody's been talking about just the crazy weather, the lack of snow and lack of moisture. Unfortunately, this is one of the results that you see from this, the dry conditions. So, Jennifer, while this is still an ongoing emergency, this December wildfire event is already the most destructive in Colorado history. Certainly not a way that many people wanted to start the new year. Oh, so sad. Katie, thank you for this. CBC's Katie Nicholson in Washington.